we're at the cusp of a technological revolution. Change has always been with us, but the rate of change is changing. It's no longer evolution, it's revolutionary. The, you know, the trajectory is changing and the momentum is accelerating. It's acceleration and trajectory change all at once and three-dimensionally. But what you really have to recognize that what moves people is not state-of-the-art technology, it's state-of-the-heart technology. The idea that this technology is a cold comfort Unless the, the engineer can serve the poet and the poet the engineer, unless there's that connection between the two, technology doesn't do anything. Unless it moves something, unless it renders a benefit, unless it makes the distances closer, unless it makes it more resonant, more memorable, unless it, unless it offers a, a deeper meaning uh, to your heart and your soul, a deeper purposefulness, it'll be vestigial, it'll be gone. So the idea is don't abandon state of the heart for state of the art. Ask yourself a very important question. The benefit of this technology, how does it make us connect better? I don't mean connect technically better, that's important, but how does it make us connect better? How does it get more and deeper heartfelt connection between people? Now, I think a Twitter is an incredibly valuable tool. It's a way to send, you know, short burst messages, information to people and really tell you where you are geographically. And it doesn't mean that poetry has to be long. But the idea is, venerate the state of the heart, not just that of the art of the Ozen Ones. Stand guard of the portals of your mind. Technology isn't an answer, it's an enabler. It's an enabler, it enables you to do something better, faster, more effectively, more joyously. You know, if, if that's really what it comes down to. All of the uh, social networks are an expression of human needs human desires. That's why they're so powerful. You drive out of your house today and you're two miles down the road and you go like this, not down here, but this, what are you looking for? Now, you're not looking for your pen. You're not looking for your photo album. You're looking for your phone and you, it's got right next to your heart and you don't have it. You got heart attack. You go, ah! And what do you do? You turn around and you go get it. Why do you do that? Because this has habituated you to, to a connection that this mobile device has had, which is tinkering with your neural pathways. It has rewired you. It has gone almost from a want to a need. You are addicted to it, if not habituated to it. But the reality is, why? Because it's a sense of connection, always being connected to your family, to your work, to your business, and to your joy, whatever your joy is. You can look at your football game, you can look at your pictures of your family, and very soon all your medical information will be on it. Oh my God, it's going to be your wallet. Those little Benjamins and those Franklins and those Washingtons, they're going to be gone. You're going to pay for everything with this new thing called a mobile phone. That is a transformative device because of the way it's been absorbed into society and by us individually. And boy, you get total anxiety when you leave that home or lose it. And everybody knows it.